Hi, welcome. I um, have some time left. And if there's something that I feel is important to convey to our Arca Linux users, that's the fact that Arca Linux D became so, so interesting. And this video is here just to promote basically Arca Linux D. Some things have changed so considerably that um, it really is a very good ISO to start to learn and get to grips with Arch Linux and Arch Linux, this, the both of them, right? So what I'll do is I'm gonna launch here Control I uh, Super F7 actually, and whoa, I have a lot of stuff in here. Of course, I've been testing them all out, but um, I'm gonna use this here. So there's already something um, in there. I mean, it's it's already formatted. It has some some kind of desktop in there. But I'm gonna go from from scratch again. So take a look at the settings. Maybe uh, maybe you're using different settings. That's all good. As long as it works, it's super. Um, could give a little bit more memory here. I have 16, so 50/50 is okay. If you want to go EFI, you can do so. Maybe it's a good thing to do that now. And then display all the way up I've done it this time and uh, VBOX VGA I've enabled this thing it doesn't matter if it's invalid or not it's gonna work but uh, basically that's I think that was the reason why it was and VBOX SVGA is possible as well but do check again do check again if it not if it's not changing to VM again because then you get this very small 800 and 600 I think so that's not uh, not interesting at all so I've downloaded something, choose a disk file. I've got downloaded the D, the D, the D, the D, the D, the D downloads. There it is, coming from seat host. Double click and probably, yeah, on the other screen. Double click here. So for me, that's uh, my edit value is I'm booting EFI rather than grub, which is uh, my standard setting. So in I think six months ago, we still had to wait like a minute or so before EFI was booting up back in the days uh, it was considered very beta but you see it's actually quite fast uh, so virtualbox is improving that's great and we're booting up articlinks d now why am i so enthusiastic about this articlinks d version basically because there are so many options there's so much flexibility in articlinks d you you cannot guess how many possibilities you could have the thing is if you don't do anything well, basically, you still have the same thing as the last time. So everything is cleaned out. Don't need to clean everything. Was not installed. So fine. No partitions. So great. I'll just go ahead. Welcome to Arclinx installer. Uh, always a good thing to have a quick view that the version is for future reference. And this is indeed, I get it, a very complex thing, but a very fun thing. This is your Lego box. You can choose whatever piece of the puzzle or piece of the Legos you would like to have. These guys are all about um, hardware, right? Linux and Nvidia and Intel AD. And here we start with the backend services, all kinds of services. And then you want to be greeted with something. So the login manager or the display manager. And here the fun starts. What desktop will I install? And what extra software, which you can install always later with sudo pacman minus s or yay. But, so you can skip this, great. And then you get your git clone, fine. Nothing changed, it's the same thing as before. But we do have a screen here that makes it more interesting. First of all, well, the Linux kernel. Um, the Linux kernel on this machine, on the ISO, will stay the same and will stay fixed forever and forever, right? But um, in time, you'll get a new kernel. So you can actually boot up with the newest kernel already. So that's also a good thing to have. And all the NVIDIA support with it. Now. I'm a virtual box and I don't care about sound and Bluetooth and all that. So I'm, I'm not going to select it because if it's a real metal thing, then yeah, sure. You're going to select some sound, I guess. Right. So you want to be greeted with something. It's this one, that one, that one, that one. It all has consequences and we can't do anything about it. GDM is built with GNOME. So if you use this one, you'll get GNOME in. If you want to install GNOME, that's fine. Right, but SDM is actually built more for plasma, and that's why we use LightDM because there's no 
extra uh, dependencies. There's no desktop going along with it. It's just LightDM. Okay, so that's why I select it. You can actually also say, um, well, no, I shouldn't, no, not, not saying anything. Uh, you need these three guys. Um, there is also, of course, a LightDM GTK greeter, but then you need to install it later. And a LightDM GTK greeter settings, you have to install it later. So the only difference is, well, a little bit of theming there. So that's okay. That's still very virgin. Because that's the point that I've tried to accomplish, get rid of everything that this is. This is XFCE, right? This is the panel of XFC. We just don't have a menu because the idea is go through it. It's a delivery system. That's it. Install stuff, use Calamares, done. We're not going to have look around here. It's just a passing through mechanism. Now the fun starts. Um, you decide if you want to have awesome, but you can decide to say no to any Arch Linux elements. So we have lots of stuff here, but of course um, it will be a learning phase. If you say no to the, some of these guys and certainly the tiling window managers, you won't have anything. You will have a black screen and then you go to the wiki like we did. We went to the wiki. We took a look at the code and copy pasted some kind of config somewhere and started from scratch. So that's an interesting thing. But I remember my path in i3 when I was still on, I don't know, I think Linux Mint, I suppose, at that time. It is a love and hate. I mean, you end up in a black screen and say, now what? No right mouse click, no menus, nothing, right? So most of these styling window managers do not provide a functional system out of the box, out of the blue. Even OpenBox has a very minimal menu that will not work because it's pointing to applications that you don't do not have. So it is in essence a very good learning ISO. And if you stick to the desktops, I think that's the most fun for the beginners saying, okay, I'm going to try out how will the desktop budgie look without any of Arch Linux stuff. So just out of the box. And yet we need GNOME for this guy. Well, you could try out and see what happens if you just install this guy. So it's all pieces of the puzzle. And it's so interesting to see what's happening if you install one package, then another package, then another package, and then find out, yeah, definitely need these two or these three or these four, right? So it's a lot of um, complexity. Great, I understand that. But at some point in time, I think you will be ready to venture this way and, and uh, try to understand, okay, uh, what if I just do Mate and Mate Extra and no Arch Linux stuff? You see, that's the point. That's the, um, the fun I feel, the vibe I feel. You get a graphical installer, Calamaris, and you end up actually in a very basic Arch Linux system because this is not included. Arch Linux is not included. You have still Mate package from Arch Linux, another one from Arch Linux. So what's from Arco? Yeah, one file, this is the light DM here, up here. We have an, a little bit a nice, nicer theme to greet you. That's it, that's it. All the rest is, all these guys is just Arch, 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 Arch. So basically you get this um, feeling of Arch Linux when you install this. And this is what, well, gives me a kick really. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and install something. So, uh, pop, 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 pop. so that's one. And now the, the fun starts. Um, why don't I install two of them, right? Okay, why not two? But no Arch Linux. I'm gonna have a look what it looks like without Arch Linux stuff. And then I'm gonna build my own. You won't have theming. You won't have icons. You won't have, um, well, you can have icons. Uh, that's down here, right? Themes. But um, start without, right? Start without. And um, you won't have the keyboard shortcuts and so on and so on and so on. But that's, if you venture your way this way, then I think you'll appreciate Arch Linux even more because there's a lot of work in these three files, right? A lot of time went into making all the configurations and the keyboard shortcuts and so on and so on and so on. The look and the feel of Arch Linux is in those packages. But it's super idea to omit the packages of Arch Linux and 
get the feel from the Arch Linux distribution. So, enough said, come on, installed already. So, Belgium, fine, next, erase disk, no swap, whatever you choose, all of these things will work. We can encrypt it as well. Let's do another example so people see it's gonna work. But maybe you wanna have a bigger swap. Um, in my case, virtual box, right? Mm. Not a good idea. I won't have that much space left, but this one is probably okay. I'm gonna install two desktops, right? I need to have some space. All right, and we're off. Install, please. Let's make it a little bit smaller again. And let's um, pause the video here because not much is to, oh yeah, I can tell some more information. Right mouse click anywhere on our ISOs, there is information. You can open a terminal, that's great. So we can type in something. You maybe need to set your keyboard. I need to do it all the time. So B, E, D, E, stuff like that. Okay, that's interesting. So you can type in Azerti, QWERTY and all that. What also is important is this button down here. We have this application menu. Since we don't have a menu here, we have a, a menu here, applications. And there are some interesting things here. Install at Linux, I've got a debug system. Um, not interesting. Oh, settings, we forgot settings. So we have a render, maybe you need it at some point in time to see the screen resolutions and all that. So um, this is my VGA one. And you can, if you have a dual screen, you can drag it along and save it and all that. So apply, save, etc. Um, okay, interesting, oops, interesting to know. Then in the system settings up here, so we have these guys, the welcome app. So that's the one that's running in the back end, the welcome app. We advise you to use uh, Gpart to clean everything up and then install Calamaris, but it's all up to you, you decide. But I always tend to forget it. So when we have an app, we can't forget it. We clean it up and then install it. Um, what else? We have this, we have that development. So we have some tools to work with. Just one browser to look something up. And fast track some links up here. Gpart is a very important one to, well, get started again. Maybe you closed the welcome thing. There's also a link to it. And then I am going to pause the video and let's have a look later on why I think, oh, there we go. He's off. Almost finished. So this is the longest part. And in the sense for Arcalix D, this is the smallest thing. Um, built Well, burning these this um, image that's on the ISO on the SSD is small. But of course, now we've decided to install more stuff. There is only going to be an installation of course, if you are connected to the internet. So at this point in time, he's in probably installing Mate or installing uh, XFCE, but he's getting packages in. And we've, we've asked on the GitHub of Calamaris, is there a possibility that we can get some kind of information installing Mate, installing Mate Extra, something like that. We'll see how Calamaris will uh, evolve because it is always in evolution, it's always improving, and that's great. All right, let's pause the video here because it needs to install two desktops, right? All right, it's finished. We don't have to click here anymore. We just say done. Boot up, we're on a virtual machine, so we uh, are asked our password. And we wait. If you type it wrong, it will not boot anything. So you need to reset it in VirtualBox. That's con the right control and R, I think it was. So you see the, um, how it looks when you're encrypt things. Immediately it's asking the password. And it takes time and I don't like to waste time. So I'm not encrypting my machines, but uh, people with laptops and going uh, outside, outside of their home, well, they tend to like it. This is normal. Maybe you will expect, hey, why is this black? I wanted to have Mate and XFCE. This is normal. We give you the choice to install LightDM, SDDM, etc. So how would I know what you will choose? So the only thing you have to remember is sudo system ctl enable the thing you chose. 
So there's LightDM, there is SDDM, there is GDM, and there is LXDM, right? That's it, that's it. That's all the knowledge you require to uh, launch this thing. Make sure it says created, right? Created symlink, fine. Now, in a tiling window manager, just remember already, you have to type scale. Why? Because the configurations of all the tiling window managers are in ETC scale. And they don't have to be there. They need to be in your home directory and hence the scale. So in my case, I am so I'm typing my password again. In my case, um, I have two real desktops. So there is no need for me to do a scale, but we'll see what is inside ETC scale. Something is there. But no configs because the packages from Article Linux are not installed. We did not uh, tick them off, or do you say it in English? We did not select them, right? So they're not installed. There's nothing in ETC scale from those packages. Now I've made you probably curious. So this is the look. This is what Arch Linux provides us out of the box. This is what I've uh, looked at for lots of years right so but you changed it we've changed it you change it to anything you like you choose your icon you like the theme you like etc and you're off now so making you curious what is inside etc scale then etc enter not working etc and then scale okay that's working so control h there is something inside Luckily, as our bash RC is here, so meaning and control T not working, F12 not working, super shift enter not working. Oops, something is opening with super shift enter at smash pad. All right, not our doing, it's the mate setting. All right, so bash RC we can open it and it's gonna be our bash RC. So, luckily, we have our aliases with us, so that's uh, something we get. And there's the Article Links welcome app. Auto start has the Article Links welcome app and Neo Fetch setting. That is, is it. There's nothing more. So if we do a Control T, not working, Eric. So where would be my terminal thing? We have XFC terminal, UXCT terminal, Mate terminal, and Termite. So there it is, Neo Fetch. So that's working. So we know we're on Arclix D, we're on Mate, etc. What if, what will the other thing look like? So log out Eric, log out. We've installed two. You can install all of them, but beware that Deeping has specific packages and it's gonna conflict. So I think best this thing to do is just to install Deeping alone or it is for testing and then of course, then go ahead. So we have here the XFC look. This is the XFC standard menu, looks different. So we've made choices and that's the point in Arch Linux and Arch Linux, make choices, choose what you want to install, what elements would you like to change? And that's the fun in Arch Linux, get the Lego blocks, choose what Lego block you want to install and get a nice view. That's the point, that's the, the the fun and the challenge, I think, that Arcanix D can provide. How do I get to the level from Arcanix XFC in this case, Arcanix B XFC? Can I can I make it similar, or maybe not? Right, but it's it's a then you have a goal. Can I make it similar? What packages do I need to make that happen? And that's an interesting exercise, really. All right, I'm enthusiastic. I hope I've I've got the, the vibe across and you try it out it's gonna be an awesome experience all right cheers